Hey guys, before we kick this video off, I wanted to come and share some awesome and exciting news with you. I am very pleased and very excited to announce that March 17th at 6 p.m. we're kicking off our student ministry in-person worship once again. That's right, we're coming back in the church. So I pray that you'll invite your friends, I pray that you'll come, and that we'll be able to gather again and talk about Jesus in the flesh together. I'm excited to be together with you guys again. March 17th, 6 p.m. Hey guys, I hope you're having a fantastic week. Tonight we're digging into the life of a disciple, and I pray that this series, The Life, has been good for you. I pray that you're enjoying the content. I know that I am, and I've talked to the other leaders. They're enjoying it as well. This life curriculum is helping us see what it means to be a life of a follower of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what a disciple is, somebody that follows Jesus, that is being changed by Jesus, and someone that is on mission with Jesus. So as we move through this lesson and as we talk about different things, know that that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming to, to uncover and discover within our own lives, each and every one of us personally, to understand and to know what it means to follow Jesus, be changed by Jesus, and be on mission with Jesus more and more in our each and every own life. You know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about being imitators, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about it from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, and it was about imitating God. And we, we learned how we could imitate God in a way because God came in flesh form as Jesus Christ and walked here on earth. And as he walked here on earth, he gave us plenty of examples that we could imitate and that we could follow him. And that's what we are to do as disciples of Jesus Christ, follow him because he's our teacher, and we should mimic him in his ways. And then last week, we heard from Yolanda as she talked about imitating others. Now, we imitate others in various ways. We imitate others as we're on the ball field. There's certain baseball stances and grips and swings and every piece of movement, movement to hit the ball, to catch the ball, to throw the ball. It, when we see professional players doing it the right way, we want to imitate them so that we can be the best that we can be, so that we can better our game. When we see football players playing professionally, quarterbacks, how they throw the ball, what they're looking for in the defensive setup so they know which way they should go and which way they shouldn't go so they don't get sacked, we want to imitate them so that we can play our best as we go up through school. And it doesn't change as we live out our life for Jesus Christ. There are people that God puts in our life specifically so that we can imitate them as they imitate Christ. There will always be somebody a little bit more mature in the faith that comes along. And we should strive to imitate them so that we can be the best that we can be for God and to glorify His name and to magnify everything that He's done for us, for you and for me by dying on that cross paying the punishment, the penalties, and taking on the wrath of God for us so that we could spend eternity with God the Father in heaven forever. We need to imitate others that imitate Jesus Christ closely. And then we're going to wrap up with being imitators tonight. Tonight, we need to look at the final result of imitation. We got to see what the outcome should be for imitating others and imitating Christ. So Paul wrote to the Thessalonian church two different letters, and he wrote these letters around the time of AD 49 to AD 50, and they're Thessalonians 1 and Thessalonians 2, and that's where we're going to be at tonight in our Bibles. That's what we're going to be talking about as Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica. So What's special about the Thessalonians? Why, why do they need to come up whenever we're talking about being imitators and what the result of imitation with Christ and Christ imitators? Why, what, what do they do? What's special about them? Well, Paul wrote this letter to them for a couple of different reasons. One of the first and main reasons is that this was a young set of believers, and there was both types, Jews and Gentile believers, within this church. 
Now, as they were young believers, they were also facing uh, some oppression from other Jews that did not want to convert to Christianity. But they were also facing some oppression from Gentiles that had pagan beliefs and paganistic rituals and religions. So you had Gentile and Jewish Christians that had come together to form the church at Thessalonica, but you also still had Jews that clung to tradition, and you had Gentiles that clung to their traditions. And because of that, they would oppress the Christians. They would oppress the ones that have been converted, Jewish or Gentiles. And they were facing these strong opposition from these people, and they needed to be encouraged. They needed to be strengthened. And who better than Paul to write a letter and to strengthen someone? So Paul writes this letter, letter to encourage them, to strengthen them, to persevere in their faith, that they not give up, that they run the race. But he also writes it to encourage them in another way. See, for some reason, the Thessalonians had pretty much knocked it out of the park as Paul and Silas and some of the other disciples had went to disciple the people at Thessalonica. They made converts, the church started, and these people really dove in heart first for Jesus Christ. They were living it out like Paul had seen not much from other people. They were giving when they had nothing. They were praying when they were desperate and hopeless. They were sharing the gospel with other people, regardless if they were being oppressed and persecuted. It didn't matter. They were living life for Jesus. They were a people. They were a church to be imitated by others. And I think that's what Paul was getting at here as he encouraged them. Guys, you are doing such a wonderful job. Do not lose track. Do not lose focus of what's going on around you and what God's doing in your life because of the oppression that comes on you because of your belief in Jesus Christ. And that's one of the main things I want you to take away tonight is that there is joy and hope in following Jesus Christ because our sins are washed away, our penalty has been paid, and the wrath of God has been taken care of by Jesus Christ, and we have the hope of eternal life as Christians. But yet our life here may not be easy. We may face oppression at times. We may face being persecuted or ridiculed or made fun of at times because of our faith in Jesus Christ because there are plenty of people around us that have no care for Jesus whatsoever. That, however, does not dismiss us from sharing the faith with them, from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them because it's not up to us who comes to faith. Ultimately, it's up to God, but God wants to use us to bring others to him. You have to allow yourself to be used knowing that even if they make fun of you, your hope is in Christ alone and that God alone can bring somebody to salvation. We just have to be obedient to God. So would you open up your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians with me? And we'll be in verses 6 through 8 this afternoon. 1 Thessalonians is chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. As you turn there, as I've already said, why Paul wrote this letter to encourage them. It was written around A.D. 49 to 51. Uh, Between the two letters they were written, everybody pretty much seems to think that they were written pretty close together. Uh, So just a few years maybe apart. But this letter that Paul wrote is definitely one of encouragement. So would you follow along with me as I read from verse 6 through 8. And you became imitators of us and the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. Man, Paul is like, hey, guys, you are knocking it out of the park. You received this word right here in much affliction. That's what he says in verse 6. And he is literally saying, hey, because of the Jews and the Gentiles that did not want to convert, 
They're around you and they're oppressing you and they're afflicting you. They're persecuting you. They're making fun of you. You still received this word. That means those people took it in and dealt with it personally. When you deal with God's word personally, it starts to transform and change you from the inside out. And that is what Paul was saying right here. You started to take this in and you became imitators of Paul and Silas and the others that were around and you became imitators of the Lord. Uh, so awesome to hear that a church would actually hear, and not, not just a church like you would see out here, but literally a church of people, a body of people, would hear God's Word. And they would become imitators of the ones who discipled them and imitators of the Lord, even with affliction going on. And they can do that because the last part of verse 6, if you look back, it says, with the joy of the Holy Spirit. It's so amazing to see that these people had the joy of the Holy Spirit. They could have been crushed and they could have been put down and they could have been down and out about what was going on around them and the people making fun of them. But yet they chose to find joy in the hope of salvation. The Spirit filled them up and they lived on that joy they lived on it so loudly that they became an example to all the believers in macedonia now thessalonica was this town the city in macedonia the bigger part and so you would think that paul and silas and barnabas and all these other folks and timothy you would think that those folks would have been the missionaries going out and they were but Paul was like, guys, you're doing such a great job sharing the news, making relationship, and telling other people about Jesus that we need not say anything. You guys are doing it. You're making it known. They were being imitators. Imitators of the disciples. Imitators of the Lord. It is so cool to see what God's Word can do when you start to internalize it, personalize it, and it changes you from the inside out. As you become an imitator of the people that are like Jesus, an imitator of Jesus himself, what God will do through you. That is what, that is what the people of Thessalonica was doing. They were internalizing, personalizing that word. It was changing them from the inside out. And because they were being changed, they wanted to share that news with other people. And as they shared that news with other people, more and more came to know Jesus Christ. So as an imitator, one of the things and one of the results that comes forth from being an imitator is that we share the good news of Jesus Christ. And not just in some big Billy Graham evangelistic way. That is not what this church was about. The Thessalonians wasn't about setting up parades and big events and coliseums. No, they were about personal relationships. As they traveled, as they moved about, as they went from little town to little town, buying and trading and sharing goods and different things like that, they were sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As they shared the good news of Jesus Christ, more and more came to know Jesus Christ in a personal way. They would tell them about the Word of God and all that had been recorded up to that point, and they would share with them the salvation that Jesus Christ brings and that there's an eternal hope, an eternal joy, and that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's such a cool thing to see what God is doing through these people. Are you allowing God to work that way in your life? Are you making yourself available for God to work that way in your life? See, as a result of imitating Jesus Christ, we become available for God to work in us that way. Do you imitate Christ in such a way that you're available for God to use at any point in the day? Going on, it talks about in verse 8, For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so we need not say nothing. We just hit on that. These guys have really knocked it out of the park, imitating Christ, imitating the disciples who also imitate Christ. I want to pair this with another verse from 2 Thessalonians. If you'll flip over just a couple of pages. 2 Thessalonians, verses 3 and 4. 
We ought always give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast in you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all of your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. The Thessalonian church was a model to imitate. They imitated Jesus. They imitated the disciples. And here it says that their faith was growing abundantly. We say that as a disciple, a disciple is somebody that follows Jesus, is being changed by Jesus, and is on mission with Jesus. That being changed part is not a one-time thing. It's not being dunked in the baptistry, coming up and being done with it. It's not one prayer at the altar it is literally a continuous change, a continual growth in the faith that from the moment that you are saved until the moment that you die, you are continuing to grow, continuing to be changed, to look more and more like Christ in your walk every single day. And these guys were doing it because they had been imitating Jesus. So as a result of imitating Christ and imitating other disciples that follow Christ, a result is that our faith would abundantly grow. And the last result I want to talk about is love. It says right there, and the love for every one of you for another is increasing. That's something that this world is missing. We have grown further and further and further away from God, and we see more and more and more lacking of love in this world. It makes sense, actually, as to why we are seeing a such a lack of love. And that's because we have grown further and further from the love source itself, God. When we stop to think about it, when we think about Christ's life, and what it looked like, and how he loved people while he, were, while he was here, and how he loved us, even while he hung on that cross. Does our love look like that? Does your love look like that? Man, we get tied up in so much petty junk every day, at school, at practices, ball games, tournaments, whatever it may be, we get this little bite in our ear and we want to bite back for some reason instead of loving somebody through the mess. And Jesus could have thrown his hands up so easily and been done with all the haters and the ridicule and the persecutions and everything else, but he didn't. And we can't either. As we are called to imitate Christ, we must love like God loved. We can't just throw our hands up and say, that's just the way they are. There's nothing we can do about it. There may be something God wants to do about it. And maybe he's calling you to look a little bit different so that that person can be changed from the inside out. Imitating God and imitating disciples of Jesus Christ is not an easy thing to do, as I said in the very beginning of this video. But it is a call on our lives so that we produce the results that God is wanting to see in our lives. If you're lacking those results, lacking love, lacking the increase of your faith, if you're lacking these things, are you truly imitating Jesus Christ? And this is a question that you and only you can sit down and ponder. If you want to talk to a leader about it as about to maybe what do you need to do to imitate Christ a little better, we'll gladly sit down and talk to you about it. Because we are called as disciples of Jesus Christ to love and to grow in our faith and to share God's word. We are called to imitate. We are called to produce results. I heard it said this way, and I like the way it said, faith is the root love is the fruit guys when we don't have faith we can't love the right way and if we do have faith in christ and yet we're not doing anything about it to grow and abound in it we're probably not going to grow and abound in love either guys imitating christ 
is a necessity. It's a command. I pray after these last three weeks that you would truly consider your heart and where you are in imitating God and imitating those that are around you that follow Christ closely. Because it's a big benefit for you, but it's also a big benefit for the people around you that need to see Jesus Christ in you. I love you guys, and I hope you have a great night. Let me pray with you. Father God, I'm thankful for your word. I'm thankful for your ways. And God, I'm thankful for you sending Jesus Christ so that we would have a Savior, a Messiah, so that we don't have to suffer a punishment in eternal hell, Father. We know that we can have hope and joy in eternal life with you because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. And while Jesus was here, he walked a certain way. He taught a certain way. He he, he thought a certain way. He spoke a certain way. He acted certain ways. Father God, I pray that we would want to imitate Him in His ways. Father, help us grow abundantly in the faith, Father. That way we would become strong and bold and we would speak out like the, the Thessalonians did. That others would come to know you. Let us love like the Thessalonians did so others feel loved when they don't feel loved. And let us share the good news like the Thessalonians did, Father God, so that others will hear and maybe come to faith because of you working through us, Father God. Father, give us boldness to stand up and be imitators of Christ instead of imitators of this lousy world. Help us, Father God. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Amen.